Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer on Wednesday, September 1st. I can't believe it's September already. My name is Julie Essman. I'm a member at St. Mark's and I'll be guiding us through Morning Prayer today. Our first step in, is to look up our readings in the Book of Common Prayer. We are in week of proper 17. It's on, found on page 982. We'll be reading from 1 Kings chapter 9, verse 24 through chapter 10, verse 13, and Mark 15, verses 1 through 11. Now we'll start with our opening verse, and it's found on page 78. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. The Venite on page 82. <clears throat> Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. Our Psalms today, since it's the first, we'll be starting over at the beginning of the Psalter, um, is we start with Psalm 1. It's found on page 585. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff, 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 <laughs> which the wind blown, blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. Psalm 2. Why are the nations in an uproar? uproar? Why do the people mutter empty threats? Why do the kings of the earth rise up in revolt, and the princes plot together against the Lord and against his anointed? Let us break their yoke, they say. Let us cast off their bonds from us. He whose throne is in heaven is laughing. The Lord has them in derision. Then he speaks to them in his wrath, and his rage fills them with terror. I myself have set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. Let me announce the decree of the Lord. He said to me, You are my son. This day I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for your inheritance, and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall crush them with an iron rod, and shatter them like a piece of pottery. And now, you kings, be wise. Be warned, you rulers of the earth. Submit to the Lord with fear, and with trembling bow before him lest he be angry and you perish, for his wrath is quickly kindled. Happy are they all who take refuge in him. Psalm number three. Lord, how many adversaries I have. 
how many there are who rise up against me. How many there are who say of me, there is no help for him and his God. But you, O Lord, are, are a shield about me. You are my glory, the one who lifts up my head. I call aloud upon the Lord, and he answers me from his holy hill. I lie down and go to sleep. I awake again because the Lord sustains me. I do not fear the multitudes of people who set themselves against me all around. Rise up, O Lord, set me free. O oh my God, surely you will strike all my enemies across the face. You will break the teeth of the wicked. Deliverance belongs to the Lord. Your blessing be upon your people. Psalm number four. Answer me when I call, O oh God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I am hard pressed. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you worship dumb idols and run after false gods? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. When I call upon the Lord, he will hear me. Tremble then and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence upon your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Many are saying, Oh, that we might see better times. Lift up the light of your countenance upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart, more than when grain and wine and oil increase. I lie down in peace, at once I fall asleep, for only you, Lord, make me dwell in safety. And lastly, Psalm number five. Give ear to my words, O Lord, consider my meditation. Hearken to my cry for help, my King and my God, for I make my prayer to you. In the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. Early in the morning I make my appeal and watch for you. For you are not a God who takes pleasure in wickedness, and evil cannot dwell with you. Braggarts cannot stand in your sight. You hate all those who work wickedness. You destroy those who speak lies, the bloodthirsty and deceitful, O Lord, you abhor. But as for me, through the greatness of your mercy, I will go into your house. I will bow down toward your holy temple in awe of you. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness, because of those who lie in wait for me. Make your way straight before me, for there is no truth in their mouth. There is destruction in their heart. Their throat is an open grave. They flatter with their tongue. Declare them guilty, O God. Let them fall because of their schemes. Because of their many transgressions, cast them out, for they have rebelled against you. For all who take refuge in you will be glad. They will sing out their joy forever. You will shelter them, so that those who love your name may exult in you. For you, O Lord, will bless this, the righteousness, the righteous. You will defend them with your favor as with a shield. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first reading today is from 1 Kings, chapter 9, verse 24, and that goes through chapter 10, verse 13. After Pharaoh's daughter had come up from the city of David to the palace Solomon had built for her, he constructed the supporting terraces. Three times a year, Solomon sacrificed burnt offerings and fellowship offerings on the altar he had built for the Lord, burning incense before the Lord along with him, and so fulfilled the temple obligations. King Solomon also built ships at Ez Ezion Geber, which is near Elath in Edom on the shore of the Red Sea. And Hiram sent his men, sailors who knew the sea, to serve in the fleet. With Solomon's men. They sailed to Ophir and brought back 400, 420 talents of gold, which they delivered to King Solomon. Chapter 10. When the queen of Sheba heard about the fame of Solomon and his relation to the name of the Lord, she came to test him with hard questions. Arriving at Jerusalem with a very great caravan, with camels carrying spices, large quantities of gold and precious stones, she came to Solomon and talked with him about all she had on her mind. 
Solomon answered all her questions. Nothing was too hard for the king to explain to her. When the queen of Sheba saw all the wisdom of Solomon and the palace he had built, the food on his table, the seating of his officials, the attending servants in their robes, his cupbearers, and the burnt offerings he made at the temple of the Lord, she was overwhelmed. She said to the king, The report I heard in my own country about your achievements and your wisdom is true, but I did not believe these things until I came and saw with my own eyes. Indeed, not even half was told me. In wisdom and wealth, you have far exceeded the report I heard. How happy your men must be. How happy your officials who continually stand before you and hear your wisdom. Praise be to the Lord your God, who has delighted in you and placed you on the throne of Israel. Because of the Lord's eternal love for Israel, he has made you king to maintain justice and righteousness. And she gave the king 120 talents of gold large quantities of spices and precious stones. Never again were so many spices brought in as those the Queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. This next one is in parentheses. Hiram's ships brought gold from Ophir, and from there they brought great cargoes of almond wood and precious stones. The king used almond wood to make supports for the temple of the Lord and for the royal palace and to make harps and lyres for the musicians. So much almond wood has never been imported or seen since that day. King Solomon gave the Queen of Sheba all she desired and asked for, besides what he had given her out of his royal bounty. Then she left and returned with her retinue to her own country. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our first canticle today is Canticle 11. The third song of Isaiah on page 87. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, deep gloom enshrouds the peoples. But over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open. By night or day they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light of the day. By night you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second reading is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 15, verses 1 through 11. Very early in the morning, the chief priests with the elders, the teachers of the law, and the whole Sanhedrin reached a decision a decision. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Are you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate. Yes, it is as you say, Jesus replied. The chief priests accused him of many things. So again Pilate asked him, aren't you going to answer? See how many things they are accusing you of. But Jesus still made no reply, and Pilate was amazed. Now it was the custom at the feast to release a prisoner whom the people requested. A man called Barabbas was in prison with the insurrectionists who had committed murder in the uprising. The crowd came up and asked Pilate to do for them what he usually did. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate, knowing it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed Jesus over to him. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have Pilate release Barabbas instead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second canticle is canticle number 16. The Song of Zechariah. It's found on page 92. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. 
he promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our lives. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Apostles' Creed on page 96. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Well, our first collect today is a collect for um, David Pendleton Okerhater. He was a deacon and missionary of the Cheyenne Indians in 1931. So I will read more about it tonight in evening prayer, but we'll read his collect. O God of unsearchable wisdom and infinite mercy, you chose a captive warrior, David Okerhater, to be your servant and sent him to be a missionary to his own people and to exercise the office of a deacon among them. Liberate us, who commemorate him today, from bondage to self, and empower us for service to you and to the neighbors you have given us, through Jesus Christ, the captain of our salvation, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And then our second collect is a collect for grace on page 100. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. And finally, a call it for mission on page 101. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hardwood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. I invite your prayers at this time. We continue to pray for um, those on our parish prayer list. We pray for comfort for the Carney family, the Ch De Chazi family, for Jim, Laura and Sophie, Mac, the Norman and Corley families, Pat, Stella, and John, 
We pray for favor for Casey and Mark, Jay and Robin, grace for Stephen and Ivy and Yoon, guidance for Chris, Diane, peace for Susie, physical healing for Amelia, Angela, Candy, Cindy, Cliff, Debbie, Dee Dee, Drew, Greg, Hun, Irma, Jeff, Catherine, Kelsey, Lisa, Mark with the C, Mark with a K, Michael, Paige, Patrick, H, Sarah, Sharon, Teresa, and Tim. We continue to pray for protection for the people of Afghanistan, Haiti, and those in Louisiana that have suffered from the Hurricane Ida. Also, we ask for protection for Billy, Connor, Debbie, Emma, and Joe. We pray for reconciliation for Aaron and Pat and strength for the decent family for Yoon Hee, Gloria, Glenda, Jeannie and Erlene, Sarah and Gay, the Trevino family. We pray for wisdom for Barbara and may Clement rest in peace. <clears throat> Our general thanksgiving is found on page 101. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Well, thank you all for joining me this morning. Uh, especially want to say hi to those who uh, said hello to me on Facebook. Good morning, Jerry and Mike, Sylvia and Father Bob. Appreciate you tuning in and I'll be back at 5 p.m. for evening prayer. Hope to see you all there. Have a great day.